I have devised seven tests to put these carbon fiber bars through their paces and each one gets more and more destructive. It's cracked down one side. So what are these tests that I've created? Now we have the manual force test, the torsion test, the drop test, as if the bike fell over, a glancing blow test, that's where the wing mirror comes in, a head-on collision test with a brick wall, force tension test with a 2,000 kilogram cable puller, and then the good old sledgehammer to finish. I bought some fully integrated carbon bars, some independent carbon bars, and I'll also do all the stress tests on a set of aluminium bars as well. Now, interestingly, in my poll, 59% of you think that aluminium bars are stronger. We shall see if you are correct. Disclaimer, this is a highly scientific experiment. with stringent safety measures in place. Just kidding, I'm a random guy in my garden. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but I guess we will find out together. To kick things off, our very scientific manual force test. Now, I had to build the first of what will be many test rigs. Step one, cutting the tubing down to size, easy enough. Step two, file the end so it's not like a razor blade in my hands. I drilled some holes in this random off-cut of wood that I had, which will become our secure base for the rig. I'm using nuts and bolts to secure the fixed mount for the pole in place. Those bolts are cranked up super tight. That should help it withstand the incoming force. Now with the pole in place locked in with the grub screws, we are ready to attach the stem. And just like that, we've got our first test rig. Now this rig is tiny compared to the monstrosities that I've got planned later in the video. First up, we have the separate carbon bar and stem combo. Now I threw all my body weight into them, literally pushing with all my might, and there was no movement at all. Now you'd think these bars may at least creak or something under the pressure, but no, they held strong. Now the fully integrated carbon bars were a bit of a pain to install with a much thicker diameter, a little bit of hammer action to get everything seated. Start as we mean to go on, right? Once mounted, it was the same story as before. No budging at all. These bars, if anything, felt even stronger than the separate carbon bars. And despite throwing all my body weight at them again, they stood firm. That's another pass for the carbon integrated setup. The aluminium bars were much easier to mount, requiring just a single adapter, no hammer required this time. As I applied my body weight, there was literally nothing. These aluminium bars didn't even flinch under the pressure. It seems that no matter how hard I tried, my weight wasn't enough to break them. Little boy. All of these passed this test, so next up, the torsion test. For the separate carbon bar and stem combo, it was a similar story to the manual force test. I push one end down while pulling the other, trying to twist the bars and feel for any deflection, but honestly, there was absolutely nothing. Moving on to the fully integrated carbon bars, and these probably felt the strongest of the bunch. I'm not sure if it's because there's no stem, so there's no movement there, but they didn't budge even a fraction. Now for the aluminium bars, I thought these might give me some movement, but even when I tried twisting them with everything I've got, there was nothing. Maybe I need to start hitting the gym or something because no amount of force from me made any difference. That's another pass. For the next test, we're going to simulate what happens when your bike takes a good old fashioned tumble. Now to step things up a notch, I'll be dropping the handlebars onto the hardest thing I can find in my garden, a slab of Yorkshire stone. This thing is not messing around, it's heavy and unforgiving. Perfect for our test. Now of course, I don't fancy throwing my actual bike onto a slab, so I built a rig to mimic the drop. I swapped out the fixed mount for the pivot to create a kind of slamming mechanism, allowing the bars to fall. To make sure we're testing at the right height, I measured and cut a piece of metal tubing to mimic the height of real road bike bars. It's time to let gravity do its thing and slam these bars straight into that Yorkshire stone. So I lined up the carbon bars and then let them drop. Now after the initial hit, the inspection showed, well, almost nothing, a tiny little mark, but no cracks, dents, or anything that screams disaster. Now, I'm not sure how many times to drop these bars, but let's go with a nice round 10. So I let loose and dropped them 10 times in total, one drop after another, each impact hitting the thick stone. Now, after all that, 
here's the damage report, minimal. We've got some scratches and a few minor marks, but overall, these bars are looking pretty solid. I'd say that's a pass for sure. Next up, the fully integrated carbon bars, and after 10 impacts, there was hardly any noticeable damage as well. These bars have some kind of no fall damage perk. Still, nothing but surface level marks, another pass. Kind of want something to break. Now for the aluminium bars. We mounted them up and gave them the same 10 drop treatment. Now after the first drop, it's just a small mark. Then it was impact after impact. And I'll admit, it's weirdly fun doing this in my garden. Now after the 10 impacts, we checked them out. There's a bit of a mark where the main impacts happen, but honestly, they're still looking pretty solid. No bends, no serious damage. So it's safe to say that dropping these bars has made little to no difference. All right, these bars are holding up like a champ. But now it's time to turn things up a notch and simulate some larger impacts. First, a glancing blow from a wing mirror. For this, I'm building a giant contraption that's straight out of a Blue Peter episode. Now here's the plan. I'm thinking two A-frames with a wooden cross beam across the top where I can screw in the bar mount. Then using a long pole, we'll let gravity take care of the rest, swing in the bars, into the wing mirror like a battering ram. Now, I did buy four lengths of wood, but it looks like the builders took one for the house renovation. Luckily, there's some random scrap wood lying around, so I'll use that. After marking where the cross supports will go, I measured the distance between the legs and cut the wood to size. Then use the first as a guide to cut the second one for the second A-frame. A little screw screw, cut cut, and viola. One leg is complete. It's starting to look, uh, comically large at this point though. Next, I repeat the same steps for the second A-frame. We've now got ourselves a giant frame that looks like it belongs at a construction site. I've added some extra support here and there because it was a little bit wobblier than expected. It's up and towering over my garden like some kind of DIY monstrosity. Onto the frame for the wing mirror. I've built this at the same height as the bars will swing, complete with chunky screws to hold it in place for the impact. about all the strange behavior. For the separate carbon bar and stem combo, the first three hits clocked in at a max speed of 15.5 miles per hour. After all that, the bars still look solid with no visible damage, no bending. Still straight as an arrow to my eye. For the next round, I decided to give the mirror a real workout by rotating it and get a direct hit on the glass. The slow motion shots tell a story and the impact was greater. Now, after a total of five impacts, I inspect the bars and honestly, they were in great shape. No cracks, no dents, no deformities. Now, given they've already been through two manual tests and the drop test before this, I'd say I'm impressed. Next up were the fully integrated carbon bars and I followed the same process, five impacts. Direct impact. We've managed to shatter it, but despite that, the bar showed no significant damage on the initial inspection. For the remaining impacts, I ramped it up and threw everything I had at them, each time landing a direct blow. After all that, the bars were still in great condition though. There were a few scratches on the curve, but no cracks or splits, even where the cables root on the inside, which could be a natural weak spot, nothing. Finally, I did the same for the aluminium bars, five hard swings, impact after impact, they took it in their stride. For the last hit, I made sure to capture that slow motion shot to try and show you that impact. And it could have been the last few moments of that handlebar's life. It wasn't. Looking over them, they looked absolutely fine. A few scratches here and there, but nothing major. They weren't bent or warped in any way. Honestly, the wing mirror took more damage than the bars did. Now, smashing a wing mirror with a carbon handlebar on a giant swing is fun, but let me be real for a moment. It's not the best test and doesn't truly replicate what these handlebars would experience in the wild. When we drop bars from a height, gravity does its thing and the bars experience significant force when they hit the object. But in the real world, the force would be multiplied by the weight of you, your bike, and any snacks you pack for the ride. That's where things like G-force come into play. So our swing is creating acceleration, but the mass is just the handlebars. If we add weight to simulate the rider and bike, this added weight would mean more energy, which equals a bigger G-force on impact. As much as I'd like to hang on to the swing and impact the bars, I don't think it's the best idea. And let's be honest, 
my rig would probably implode and I'm not trying to end up on you've been framed. Let's see if I can injure myself enough for a couple of days off work. I'll add all four of these trusty six kilogram sandbags that gives us an additional 24 kilos of dead weight. Just pure solid force slamming into the bars. That's my theory anyway. The accelerometer seems to have failed pretty early on so that's getting sent back frustratingly. I lined everything up and I let that swing fly into the wing mirror. Onto the second swing. This one definitely felt like it packed more punch. I took a look at the bars expecting some damage, but other than a few extra scratches, no major damage. Honestly, with the added weight, things were feeling a little bit sketchy on the rig. So naturally I threw in some reinforcements to keep the rig from tipping over. At this point, I'm seriously questioning my life choices. So if you're still watching, please hit subscribe. One more hit for good measure, this time cranking it up so the swing was full height for full impact. The next test will be less forgiving though, I promise. Now overall the bars are looking good, a little roughed up but nowhere near destroyed. Next, it's the fully integrated bars. After swapping them, I geared up for another set of swings, three solid hits, and yes, I was literally lifting the bag over my head, trying to get the maximum speed here. I even managed to hit the wing mirror support, which gave us a sort of solid dead stop impact. And after a few rounds of this abuse, the bars were still in decent shape. Some surface scratches, nothing worrying though. Onto the aluminium bars, I'm really curious if these will bend or buckle under the same pressure. Three swings again, and it's basically the same result. For a second, I thought I spotted some stress marks, but turns out they were just scuffs, like scratches from the impacts. No visible bending or major damage. So all three sets of bars survived. Don't worry though, let's up the ante and go for a head-on collision with a brick wall. But first we need to make the brick wall. This is getting ridiculous. I want to change the way the weight is mounted on the swing as well. I want it a bit more realistic, you know, as realistic as you can, smashing handlebars into a brick wall in your garden. To do this, I've attached the fixed pivot to a sturdy piece of wood. This will connect to the metal pole, creating a makeshift rider platform for the sandbags. Genius or madness, it's happening. I'll leave the sandbags loose so they can fall, twist, and simulate the movement during a crash. And now let me know what you think in the comments down below. So far, I've been defeated and all the bars are still standing, but I'm not holding back this time. I'm switching up the order and starting with the aluminium bars first. It was a solid hit, one that had me thinking these bars may have some damage, just maybe. But after checking them over, they still didn't look bent, no damage at all. Sure, they had some battle scars, but nothing that screamed, retire me, to my untrained eye anyway. It still looked pretty straight, with no warping or bending. Onto the full integrated carbon bars. I pulled the weight back, lined everything up, and let them drop into the brick wall. the second impact. This was the heaviest yet. It hit hard enough to knock the wall down. Now after a quick rebuild of the wall, I loaded up the swing one last time, but halfway through the swing, disaster struck, the bar gave way and sheared off near the base. Oh. Even though it wasn't the cleanest hit, it still had a solid impact though. Looking over the bars though, there wasn't any real damage. The bars had some scrapes, but there was no visual sign that these had cracked, bent or deformed in any way. So just like the other bars, I set up the independent carbon bar and stem combo for the impact. I'm going around head height. After the first blow, I thought, all right, no big deal. This is gonna be routine with no issues again. But the second blow, that was different. It had a serious thud to it. Then the final hit, this one had a completely different sound. One sounded different and we've got the crack. The impact at the end of the lever on the drop cause a crack right by the pivot. Interestingly, there's no visible damage or cracks on the curved sections or drops where the impacts may have been. Just a few scrapes here and there. But we have a problem. There are still two bars that have a full bill of health that we need to break. So on to the next test. Now for this test, I've really gone all out to be honest. We're talking this 2000 kilogram cable puller, which I purchased, a monster of a tool. This thing could pull a car out of a ditch. A crane scale as well, which will measure up to a thousand kilograms, which I bought. We're gonna measure just how much force it takes to snap or bend these handlebars. So here is the plan. I'll build a frame from wood and make sure it's reinforced and supported to keep it upright and nice and steady. The bars go on top 
and one side will be fixed in place with a ratchet strap and the other side I'll use a crane scale, cable puller and a ratchet as well to apply the force until something gives. In theory it all made sense, in practice well there was a few hiccups but after some modifications, extra strap here and there we are ready to go with the final rig set up. I honestly have no idea if it's going to work or hold up. What is that? First up, we're tackling the integrated bar and stem combo. As I push the lever down, we're steadily increasing the force. And with each release of the ratchet, it catches, keeping the tension stable. 140. 42. 150. 156. 170. 180, 190, 200, 300, 300. Oh. He's gone. 300, I think it was 300. And as you can see, we reached around 307 kilograms when we heard that dreaded crack, right around the stem area again. So is 307 kilograms a good number? Let me know what you think down below. Now onto the aluminium bar. So with everything set up and looking as solid as I could manage, I started winching and pulling on the right side of the aluminium bars. I didn't have the ratchet straps tight enough though, so I had to rejig everything. And while adjusting, I noticed the wood starting to split. My solution? Chuck a few screws in there for some extra support. That guy sounds like an idiot. <laughs> 159. 324 kilos. Three hundred and thirteen. Oh, it's dropped. They might be bending or something's given. Four hundred and sixty. Four seventy. Three three one. 470, 470, are they bending? Something's bending. Yeah, they're bent. They're bent? Yeah, they're bent. Between 450 kilograms and 470 kilograms, within that range, the bars did start to bend. Now you can see the left side of the bar failed. If we look closely at the underside, you'll notice those stress marks where the bar took most of the force, but it took nearly half a ton of force to get to this point, but it feels less terrifying than the sudden crack you get with carbon. Even though we have two crack bars and a bent bar, they still can take my full body weight surprisingly. So none of them are truly snapped. So there is only one thing left to do. Now this was probably the craziest video I've done to this day, but also one of the most enjoyable. Now do subscribe to watch me do the same with carbon forks or carbon frames or stems. Those videos will be inbound. Let me know what you would like, you know, comment down below any suggestions or things you would like to see or things I can improve to make these tests a bit more realistic. We managed to snap both the carbon bars with a sledgehammer in the end. And I did say at the start of this video, we will break these bars. And here we are with two snap bars and one bent bar. And for the 59% of you in the poll that thought aluminium bars were stronger, in this experiment, under my conditions, you're correct. <laughs>